Yeah. When I moved here, it was, a bit, it was a bit of a dip. So it would be very good for punk, post-punk. Then in 84, 85, it kind of dipped down a bit. So it was a bit disappointing when we got here. Right. Because Blackpool, even though it's not like a world-famous scene, there's always a lot going on. A lot of small bands, a lot of stuff happening. Yes. Used to be a gig every week, and everyone knew everyone else. It's like a good little scene there. Right. And I came here, and it was suddenly, there didn't seem to be any central point. There didn't seem to be anywhere where people hung out or things happened. So yes, the Hassan was there and that. But the Hassan was always quite empty those days. It was like, we came here thinking every night there'd be something to do, and there'd be thousands of people around. Like, Basically, what it's like now in a lot of ways, you know, there's nothing like all this kind of stuff there. It was just like a couple of pubs in town, but people didn't seem to go to them either. So, so yeah, it was a bit, at first, it was a bit like, oh, moved to the wrong place. Right. <laughs> but I wanted to stay in the north because I was like from the north and that. Yes. We could have gone to London, but there's just something good about being in the north, so that's why we came here. Okay. But was getting very difficult then. There was a lot of pubs we weren't allowed, because we were kind of punky and stuff, we weren't allowed in the pubs because it, right. yeah, so. Yeah, it's ridiculous. You, you, in, the, in the summer, because they would have to the holiday makers' money, they barred everybody. There's one pub you could go to, and that was it, the whole town. You walk into other pubs, and the barman would literally get behind the bar and say, you, you have to leave, you're, uh, you're underage. We go, not underage. You go, no, what? all these stupid excuses. Right. Sometimes you go to a pub and people try and kick off with you and stuff like that. It's, it was, okay. it's quite weird, very concerned. Of course, in the winter, they don't care. They just want you in there because they make some money there. Yeah. I met Morrissey in 1983, 84, because I used to go out with a girl from Manchester, so I stayed here. Most of the summer of 83 I was around, and quite a lot of chunks of 82 as well. So I went to see Depeche Mode play, sports by Ludus, and he's reviewing the gig for Record Mirror. Right. And he's introduced to me by um, his hairdresser, um, what's he called? The guy, uh, really important guy, he's like Johnny Marr's best mate, and he's like a really important part of the whole city. But he used to know everybody and choose everyone to everyone else. He's about the only person who knew managed at the time, as well as uh, Pete Garner, who played bass in the uh, Stone Roses. That's, that's, that was my first connection with them. Right. I think the true sound of Manchester is the Chameleons. I think other bands went off a tangent. When you hear the early Stone Roses, I don't think they're copying the Chameleons, but it's the same kind of sound. It's like a big sound, flangy guitar kind of sound. There's a new band called 1913 just coming out now. A really good band, the same kind of sound. I don't think they're directly influenced by the Chameleons. Pure Essence as well, it's another one. I think if, if nothing else had ever happened in Manchester, that would be the, what all the bands would sound like. But of course things are happening all the time, you know, Smith's getting big, as an influence in it. it. Then the E's start coming in, that kind of makes the scene sound all very wonky, the Hacienda starts to affect it. So the true sound of Manchester's never actually uh, blossomed, does it? Which is a good thing, because it's got these other different like, kind of sub-sounds instead. I never saw the Sex Pistols, but when I read about them, when I heard them, they changed my life. Just because it was so exciting, you know, so it's, so there's so much part of my generation, you know, when, when I was 16 then, 15, whatever, something like the Sex Pistols, you've been waiting all your life for that to come along, and it was just so exciting, you just had to do something, you know, like make music. So yeah, I can see completely how people went to see him. If you actually saw them at a gig, I could see how that, that buzzed you up completely, you know.